Raleigh's sewage treatment had its start right here at the Rocky Branch, where Raleigh's first sewer pipe had its outflow directly into the creek. Actually, Raleigh's sewage treatment had its start right here, where everybody's human waste was their own problem. Until the late 1800s, Raleigh was small enough that people used outhouses and latrines with little trouble. Oh, there were rules about distance between necessary houses and so forth, and Raleigh had in 1854 made throwing filth in the streets a finable offense, but Raleigh's sanitation was mostly a privy and slop jar affair. In 1878, though, the federal government laid a terracotta sewer pipe beneath the post office and court building on Fayetteville Street. Its outfall into the Rocky Branch made it popular enough that a few city buildings connected to it. More important, in 1886, Raleigh ran its first successful water system, piping treated water to its 10,000 citizens. Naturally, this increased the city's sewage needs. Water that goes into homes needs to go out, too. In fact, in the early days of household running water, some cities even passed laws limiting things like bathing, which overwhelmed unprepared cisterns and sewers. So in 1890, only four years after those new water pipes, Raleigh installed its first city sewer system. Of course, it didn't treat sewage, merely pouring its collected waters into the Crabtree and Walnut Creeks. By 1897, all downtown privies had to be connected to the system. Raleigh's first planning map in 1922 shows that wastewater dumped directly into local creeks, which flowed into the noose. This continued for decades. In the 1930s, Smithfield, downstream, thought Raleigh should do a better job with its stuff and said so in court. Unfortunately for Smithfield, the judge did not agree. Drinking water was by then routinely treated. The court has drunk of this water and has bathed in it and has suffered no ill effects therefrom, the court opined, and Smithfield's case was dismissed, largely because Raleigh, in the Depression, could not afford a sewage plant. By the 1940s, however, Raleigh had grown to more than 50,000 people, and the slow-flowing noose couldn't neutralize all Raleigh's waste in 30 miles or so. Smithfield sued again, and won. Raleigh complied, completing its first ever sewage treatment plant in 1956, where the Walnut Creek Softball Park is now. The plant treated wastewater with settling tanks and trickling filters, ultimately chlorinating the effluent it released into Walnut Creek. The plant treated 12 million gallons per day and by 1967 had expanded to 16 million gallons per day. But with more than 100,000 people flushing toilets, taking showers, and cleaning their dishes and clothes, the growing city of Raleigh began studying what to do next. It soon recognized it needed to go to the same resource for sewage treatment it had gone to for its water, the Noose River. In 